presentation of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. The Missouri River. More than 2,000 miles in length, stretching from the Rocky Mountains to the Mississippi River, it is the longest river in the country, and it drains over one-sixth of the continental United States. Often called the Big Muddy, its swirling currents have seen much of our nation's history. Lewis and Clark launched their expedition on the waters of the Missouri. Steamboats brought commerce, and with it the rise of great cities. For millennia, this river system has pulsed life through the land, its constant ebb and flow enriching a diverse natural system, supporting a fish and wildlife paradise. The Missouri River has long been recognized with pride as an invaluable part of our natural and cultural heritage. And now, the river's unique place in our history assumes new significance as it becomes part of the Big Muddy National Fish and Wildlife Refuge. What we're involved in is a process. The creation of a national wildlife refuge, the creation of habitat, the creation for places wild to live and for things wild to be, and for us to experience our connection with wildness. It doesn't happen overnight. J.C. Bryant is refuge manager at the Big Muddy National Fish and Wildlife Refuge. The refuge is administered by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service the primary federal agency responsible for the conservation of fish and wildlife species. Established in 1994, the Big Muddy was created to preserve and to begin to restore some of the Missouri River's natural processes that are so vital to fish and wildlife, to manage habitats, and to provide compatible public use. It is a refuge born under a new philosophy, a new way of thinking. What we plan to do is allow the river to heal itself in places. So this refuge, uh, as it stands now, will someday perhaps be about 60,000 acres large. It will exist between Kansas City and St. Louis in that reach of the Missouri River, and it will exist on 25 to 30 separate locations, kind of give the appearance of beads on a string. We know that we can't make the river like Lewis and Clark saw it from St. Louis on up, have no intention of doing that. But we need to fix it in places. And in those reaches, this river will be able to function like a river should function. Why is a refuge needed? The Missouri River of Lewis and Clark's time, the early 1800s, is not the same river we see today. Then, the river was braided into dozens of channels. There were backwaters and sloughs of shallow and slow-moving water that supported an abundant and diverse natural system. But this wild and untamed resource, while a haven for wildlife, seemed to be at odds with the needs of man. The shallows and snags made navigation difficult and dangerous, and yearly flooding made life along the riverbanks precarious, unpredictable. In the early 1900s, we began to try to change the river to suit our needs. Snags were pulled, the channel was dredged, rock riprap lined the bank. We were successful in our goal. We changed the character of the river, but progress had its price. More than half a million acres of fish and wildlife habitat were lost, and with it, a part of the river's unique natural character as well. And as changes occurred, we learned that the river, even with our efforts, doesn't always bend to our will. In 1993, the river fought back. Record rainfall brought record flooding the lives of the people living along the banks of the Big Muddy changed forever. As the waters receded, the power of the river was evident. Thousands of acres of cropland lay covered with sand. Huge lakes were scoured in formerly productive fields. When I came to this project, what I saw was a devastated environment in many places right after the flood of 93. But then I started talking to the people that were associated with the river with the people that had grown up on the river. I started talking to people within the natural resource community that had a vision of what this river could be and should be. I talked to people who had involved themselves in economic endeavors on this river and in the floodplain for generations. And down in the middle of that is the capacity 
for all of us to with reason sit down in one place and have a river that benefits things natural and wild, that has a river that does not threaten viable economic activities. The Missouri River has played an extremely valuable part in the history of our entire country. This town was established when the railroad came through in 19. Uh, the railroad built Lupus yeah. then. Okay. There wasn't even a road down okay. through here until 1903. This was all open field. J.C. Bryant, as manager of the Big Muddy National Fish and Wildlife Refuge, spends much of his time talking to local communities about what it might mean to have refuge lands nearby. I have made this talk and I have met people just like you from St. Louis to Kansas City. And the people along this river are very interested in this river and some of the... When we come to public meeting, a, a lot of people, first of all, are very concerned when, when they hear that the government is in somewhere buying land. They first of all are concerned that the government's going to come in and take the land. We're not going to take the land. We're totally driven by the presence of willing sellers. They then are concerned about tax issues like tax payments to counties and so forth. The Refuge Revenue Sharing Act provides a payment to counties, if you will, in lieu of taxes, which in most cases exceeds the, the uh, property tax base. Uh, they're concerned about issues surrounding levy and drainage districts. We are committed to negotiating with levy and drainage districts. We try to make an upfront payment. Another issue they're, they're very concerned about is their opportunity to use land. What's it going to mean to me? Is it going to be shut off where I can't use it? It's not going to be shut off. These lands are open right now to statewide hunting and fishing seasons. They will be open to all those wildlife dependent recreational activities. We're talking wildlife observation, hunting and fishing and, and those kind of wildlife dependent activities. We don't want to put anybody out of business. We don't want to do this at anyone's distress. For we work for these people. We spend their money and exercise their pleasure in this river. But what we do, we do for the benefit of all of us. And I think that's the main thing is that everybody has to be present. We just need to back up enough that the river and the riverine system can maintain its health. It's getting more and more diverse all the time. As the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service adds lands from willing sellers to the refuge, the river will begin to restore itself. In a few places, tucked away along the river, it's already happening. My gracious, this thing changes every time I come out here. Yeah, it's, the, it's still shifting around and moving, isn't it? You that can, thing forking down there or is it just running? Is that a main channel that's going off into the river? Well, I think it just takes kind of a bend around that old uh, cross dike down there and then it cuts back. And Bryant and Jim Milligan, a fisheries biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, have come to a portion of the refuge known as Lisbon Bottoms to observe the dynamic of an unrestrained river system. Lisbon Bottoms was one of the first areas added to the refuge, and now we're stepping back to see what the Big Muddy would do. The river has cut a two-mile chute across this bottom, and for the first time in perhaps a hundred years, a new island has been created in the Missouri River. Undulation in here amazes me. This is all this scouring off in here, peeling off, is That's just creating what quite a lot of diversity. And the hydrology does in here when it reconnects. These are the kind of areas where we, we find a lot of uh, high, high density invertebrate populations and young of the year fish utilize this shallow water and uh, I guess this is where you expect to find a lot of shore birds coming in. One of the good things about this this whole area, in fact all the areas that we're going to try to put in the refuge, is that it really fits in with the concept of what's called the flood pulse. It's the kind of the current uh, ecological thinking on rivers is that the river has to have access to the flood plain. It's kind of like the fuel that drives the system. It's a source of seasonal habitats, wetlands for fish, uh, spawning and nursery habitats, shorebirds as a river comes up and down. The floodplain on the, the lower river here between Kansas City and St. Louis uh, is about 700,000 acres. Uh, we believe uh, that by uh, restoring maybe as much as 10% of that floodplain to the river and reestablishing that seasonal connectivity, utilizing the flood pulse, and allowing the river to reestablish some habitat diversity that we can achieve our fish and wildlife objectives and still allow all these other uses of the floodplain to occur. We realize now that we don't have to trade wildlife for agriculture, fish for flood control, progress for wildness. 
The Big Muddy National Fish and Wildlife Refuge is meant to bring a little of the river back, a little at a time. We think that we manage this river, and to a large extent we have changed the entire course of this river, and we have done some tremendous things from an engineering point of view. What we have failed to do is allow the river, even in small places, to be a river. A river is not just a channel. A river is not just water. A river is an environment where water coursing through this channel has the capacity to interact in meaningful ways with her floodplain. The Big Muddy is just one of more than 500 refuges that make up the National Wildlife Refuge System. Established in 1903, the system encompasses more than 90 million acres nationwide and is the world's most outstanding network of lands dedicated to wildlife. National Wildlife Refuges are administered by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, whose mission is to conserve, protect, and enhance fish, wildlife, and their habitats for the continued benefit of the American people. It often sounds like we do these things for wildlife. We're out here for the critters. The ducks need it, the fish need it. But quite honestly, the real fact is, is we do these things for ourselves as a people. We as people are better people when we allow something as majestic as this river to recreate itself and reacquaint us with what she is, and what she can do, and how we need her even though we don't understand why. What we do here, we do for your grandchildren and we do for your children. And someday I trust that they will be astounded and pleased and proud that we started here right here with this refuge for their sake.